Hello, my name is Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum. I'm a chiropractor in Cinnamonson, New Jersey, 15 minutes outside of Philadelphia. Today I want to tell you about my journey through Ayurveda, and more importantly, the journey my patients have taken with me. When I started my practice over 25 years ago, I focused mainly on diet and nutrition. Then, in the mid-1980s, I began to use Ayurveda. Today, it's central to my practice. The pivotal point came more than 12 years ago when I met and started studying with Vijay Ramakant Mishra, one of India's greatest Ayurvedic physicians, who imparted to me knowledge of his family's 5,000-year-old tradition of Shaka Wansia Ayurveda. He sat down with me one-on-one -on -one and patiently taught me how to fix each and every case that presented itself. He himself sat with his father, Vijay Kamishwar Mishra, for seven years after graduating from Ayurvedic College, learning how to put all the Ayurvedic theory into practice. His father always maintained the purity of the original teachings. While I had had some success in the past treating patients, aided by an elementary understanding of Vata, Pitta, Kapha, and Ama, now I had the tools for much more sophisticated diagnosis and treatment. And this has made all the difference. Now I know what to do when faced with the mind-boggling dilemmas of the modern-day patient. The women who have been on birth control pills for the last 20 years and are now seriously ill. The patients who have taken multiple rounds of antibiotics, which has disturbed their immune systems, resulting in autoimmune diseases, food allergies, and cancer. The people who are so sick that they can no longer tolerate taking herbs orally, almost 40% of my patients and the patients who are so overloaded with chemical toxins in the liver, they get extremely sick when you try to pull them out. I could go on and on. So here we are 12 years later. Thankfully, most of my patients are now getting well, no matter how complicated their case is. This is because Vijay Mishra has taught me how to correctly apply the knowledge of this ancient medicine to modern times. Here are some of my patients describing the benefits they have received since coming to our office. Hi, my name is Kathy. I was diagnosed with a disease called sarcoidosis. Uh, this disease usually affects the lungs and other organs in the body, but for me, it came out of my skin in the most horrific way. I had unsightly rashes on my face, my scalp, my ears, my neck, my chest. Uh, my arms and my back were totally covered. The outer part of my legs were covered. It was a very scary thing. I went to my family doctor and he recommended a dermatologist. I proceeded to go to several dermatologists. I went to a pulmonologist a specialist to make sure that it wasn't in my lungs. I went to an eye specialist and they all just treated the symptoms and not very well at that. Um, the treatments caused me thinning of the skin and muscle and joint pain. And no one ever addressed the why or the how did I get this. And I was so disillusioned at the time by them and by myself. I mean, I have always prided myself in being physically fit and being healthy. Uh, I remember at that time I was taking 15 to 20 supplements a day, easy. I was juicing raw fruits and vegetables every single day, so I really thought I was doing the right thing. And when I was diagnosed with this disease, I started taking more supplements. I took vitamins and, and minerals to pump up my immune system. I took uh, vitamins for my skin. I was trying every lotion and cream there was to, to get rid of the rash. And little did I know, I was doing more harm to myself than good. And a friend of mine recommended Dr. Teitelbaum, and I've never looked back. I remember when I first met Dr. Teitelbaum, I was feeling, it's going to make me emotional, but feeling very helpless and very, um, very frustrated. Uh, I didn't know where to go, and I remember looking at her and saying, can you help me? And she said, yes. And she completely 
turn my body around through Ayurvedic medicine and herbal remedies from India. And uh, she has taught me about eating fresh cooked vegetables and grains every day. And I'm very happy to say I'm completely cured of sarcoidosis. I had um, also scarring from all the rashes all over and she treated that with lotions and creams and my skin has never looked better. Uh, I stopped taking any vitamins. I threw everything away. She has educated me on food and nutrition and I'm still learning. I, I am definitely a work in progress but I've got my energy and my health back thanks to her. Dr. Teitelbaum is truly a gift to me. I feel so lucky and blessed to know her. She has put me on the right path and for that I am forever grateful. My name is Brenda. I began treatment with Dr. Teitelbaum two and a half years ago. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and RSD in March of 2003. When I was diagnosed, I was literally hanging onto walls to stay upright at times. My other most troubling symptoms included muscle weakness, especially in my legs, spasticity, fatigue, cognitive difficulties, neuralgia, numbness, impaired bowel and bladder function, and pain that was quite severe at times. I could not drive due to muscle weakness in my legs or perform many daily activities comfortably or at all due to pain. I had problems with balance and I fell on a number of occasions, often not being able to get up again without help. I was limping severely many times. I began seeing Dr. Teitelbaum in the fall of 2008. With her expert guidance, I learned how to follow the diet she prescribes for her patients and the reasons for that diet. Within a short period of time, I would say about six months. I was completely off of all the pharmaceutical drugs that were being prescribed by my neurologist for the treatment of MS and RSD. I had resumed walking, my preferred method of exercise, almost immediately after being discharged from Hahnemann. After beginning treatment with Dr. Teitelbaum, however, my strength and stamina improved even more. My skin looks younger, I have lost about 30 pounds, and I have lost the puffiness, for the lack of a better word, around my eyes all of which are byproducts of the Western diet. Most surprising to me, though, is the mental clarity that I have regained, as well as a very real change in my mood and outlook on life in general, as a result of following Dr. Teitelbaum's teachings. The simplest way I can describe this really is to say that I feel so much better. This is, this is I know, because I am so much better. And this renewed wellness is apparent to my family, my friends, and my coworkers, as it is often reflected back to me by them when we talk about where I was several years ago and where I am today. I don't even think about the fact that I have MS and RSD very often. Through Dr. Teitelbaum, all of the other symptoms that plagued me in the early years of my diagnosis have subsided. This without the use of pharmaceutical medications, which is nothing short of miracle to the Western way of thinking. I do feel that I have been cured in many respects and I am very, very grateful. I am proud to say that this past summer I worked hard at training and in September I rode my bicycle 25 miles from Mays Landing to Ocean City in the National MS Association's City to Shore fundraising event. I felt very strong. This is a testament to my treatment with Dr. Teitelbaum and the continuing improvement of my health. I am committed to following Dr. Teitelbaum's teachings and her remedies, and I will continue in treat with, treatment with her, God willing, for the rest of my life. I am humbled by the way in which I came to find her through my daughter and her studies. I am very devoted to Dr. Teitelbaum and Ayurveda, and I feel a great sense of humility and gratitude as I write these words. Thank you for listening to my story. Hi, my name is Lynn Patrice. I came to Dr. Teitelbaum with hepatitis C virus that was detected in 2009. I went to a gastroenterologist who gave me a test and the uh, 
load was very, very high. He wanted to do a biopsy and treat me with interferon therapy, which I declined. I knew that there was a lot of side effects from that. I changed my diet and decided uh, to come to Dr. Teitelbaum. I had heard things uh, about her and things that she could do, which she helped me with uh, the diet and certain herbs. In a year, I got another test and it came back that the hepatitis C virus was negative with zero load. Um, he took another test to just show me that the hepatitis C virus hadn't gone from my body, which I understood, but I had felt better, all symptoms were gone. I continued with Dr. Teitelbaum. He, in turn, didn't really want to know what was going on. He knew that I was seeing an Ayurvedic doctor and I was on Ayurvedic herbs and he just said no further therapy or um, treatment was needed by him. Um, we met Dr. Tettelbaum about nine years ago. I was in second grade and I had the worst allergies. I was allergic to everything under the sun. Soybean, dairy products, tomatoes, seafood, beets. I couldn't eat anything. So my mom would make all organic foods, like from scratch, and I started to have seizures and it just got so bad we didn't know what to do. And they had literally just given up hope for me. So one day, my grandma was in the supermarket and she was crying to this old lady about how she thought I was going to die and she didn't know what to do. So this lady was like, you have to go see Dr. Tettelbaum. So we showed up and... She said that she has saved a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't know what to expect at first, but you know, after a while the allergies just went away and my, my allergist that I was going to completely gave up on me. He didn't know what to do. He sent us the chops and when we got to uh, Children's Hospital and waited, um, got through the day, he basically told me that she had behavioral problems and that I needed to see a psychiatrist take her to a psychiatrist. Um, she was basically going to be classified with autism. Uh, the public schools didn't want her. They were scared to death of her. They didn't know I would have to be in weekly, daily. Um, we went to allergy conferences, my husband and I, in Baltimore. Uh, we, had ba we were basically at our wit's end. We didn't know what to do because we didn't have any professional that could help us. They basically gave, gave up, up on her. They gave up on her. And, and then we found Dr. Tettelbaum. Yeah, so after a while of coming here, like every week or so, I went to the allergist and got tested and I was only allergic to seafood and beets. And last year I actually got tested and now I'm not allergic to anything at all. So, allergy free. And then about six, five, six years ago I was diagnosed with MS and uh, I battled with going with the traditional medication that the doctors told me if I didn't that I would end up in a wheelchair and, and not be able to uh, basically function. So I listened to them and I went to uh, daily injections of a drug um, and this was before I even knew you know, doctor, that they treated MS and I thought I was going to die. I thought it was killing me. So I came to Dr. Tenenbaum, now I'm going to cry. And long story short, I run a 30 acre horse farm. Um, I ride, I get to spend time with my kids, and I fully function. I stopped all the medication. Um, I told my husband, I said, I can't live like this anymore. I really thought it was killing me. It ate muscle tissue. I have holes where I had to inject every day, and uh, if it wasn't for Dr. Tettelbaum, I don't really know where I'd be, or where we would be. I, when I decided to go off the medication, it's probably been three years, no medication at all, just strictly uh, Dr. Tettelbaum's regimen. Um, my, I still see my neurologist once a year just to go in for my uh, yearly checkup and he checks everything. Um, 
he tells me every time I go into the office, he, he does not know how I'm still functioning and, and walking um, without being in a wheelchair because I had so many lesions um, in my brain that it basically looks like a paintball gun went off in my head. And now with Dr. Tettelbaum's help, and you know, we're doing great, we're doing great. My name is Michelle Lauren Freya. I came to Dr. Teitelbaum about two years ago with lupus and Hashimoto's disease. I had gone through a series of events with regular doctors um, and at my worst point I was on 13 medications and they wanted to put me on chemotherapy to shut down my immune system. It was by um, happenstance that I got to meet Dr. Teitelbaum. And I came to her, and from that moment forth, my life has been changed. Oh, I didn't think I'd get emotional. Um, I am now off all my medicine, except one. Um, my life is greatly improved. I'm 30 years old. And when I was 25, I felt like a 90-year-old woman. I never thought I'd be able to have children. Um, or even be able to move again the way somebody my age should be able to. Um, that being said, by following um, Ayurveda uh, with the help of Dr. T, as I like to call her, um, eating properly, uh, learning about everything that I do um, everything that I put into my body, how it affects it, um, has greatly, greatly changed my life. I'm severely indebted to her forever. Um, and to Dr. Mishra as well. I owe him the world of thanks. And um, it's a beautiful thing to see how this world uh, works together with itself and things fall into place. Um, since I've been seeing her two years later, my lupus is now non-existent in blood work. Um, my doctors have gone to the point where they've told me that I'm in remission. My thyroid has been stabilized, which is very unusual for Hashimoto's disease. Um, and I'm just moving forward, living wonderfully. I recommend this to everybody. Um, my doctors are amazed because, of course, I still have to see them every six months as well because they thought I would be on my deathbed when I stopped all my medicine and started doing this. Um, so they're severely amazed as well. Um, and that's really all I have to say. It's an amazing thing what I've gone through, the experience that I've had. And Dr. T is the world to me. I love her and I think anybody who gets the chance to meet her and to experience this and learn about Ayurveda is truly blessed and will be living the way life should be lived. That's it. So this is our patient Kathy and uh, Kathy how long have you been coming to our office? About two years now. Mm -hmm. And you were diagnosed with Sjogren's and autoimmune disease yes. of the salivary glands. You were very dry when you mm -hmm. came. Mm -hmm. And for many years before that, your eyes were dry. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And so what did the, um, your doctor do for that? Well, I went to the family physician and was diagnosed with Sjogren's, which he also said was a precursor to rheumatoid arthritis, which my sister already um, has or suffers from. And uh, he advised that you know if the symptoms became extremely severe, that not to worry about it because he could always prescribe steroids for me. At which point I knew that you know it was time to um, get some other advice or um, medical information. And I haven't been back to him since mm -hmm. I started to come to um, to see you. Um, it was probably a year and a half to two years ago. And I was, oh, I had been taking Restasis for the dry eye for probably four to five years. And uh, I went on the diet, followed the guidelines, the supplements, and so on. And within about four months, 
I stopped taking all the restasis. I also had been suffering with headaches on an almost a daily basis for so many years that it just seemed normal to me. And my headaches completely disappeared. Um, some of the slight joint pain that I was having in, in the uh, joints of my fingers um, also disappeared. Um, I lost some weight and generally um, feel much better and uh, have no symptoms. I had symptoms where I would wake up in the middle of the night and my, the inside of my mouth was like a piece of paper, completely dry. Um, I understand that it can lead to digestive problems, can go into, um, I guess, into the stomach um, to the point where you have problems digesting food, um, problems with the teeth where they uh, become filled with cavities, you can lose all your teeth, um, so all of that has been reversed. Right. That's great, especially since it's running in your family. Mm -hmm. And your daughter also had some little inklings of autoimmune like this with her hair falling. Right. How's that doing now? My daughter now has, uh, she's been coming for about a year and her hair is virtually completely restored. Um, That's great. She's doing much, much better. So we were able to reverse those imbalances before it blossomed into mm -hmm. something bigger like you have exactly. diagnosed as this Sjogren's. Yes. So that's a wonderful mm -hmm. story. Thank yes. you for coming out today. Perhaps one of the biggest challenges and the most wrenching is autism. I was told that I might only see one case of autism in my lifetime. That was true in the early years of my practice. But then in 1989, the vaccination schedule went from 11 shots up to 61 shots for each child. From that point on, children started streaming in, day in, day out with symptoms ranging from food sensitivities, gut and digestive disturbance, to ADD, ADHD, PDD, NOS, Asperger's, speech and motor delays, and mild, moderate to severe autism. Heartsick mothers came in one after the other. Their stories were similar. Their child was doing well, developing normally. Then they began their intense schedule of shots. More shots than their developing bodies could handle. They described how the child lost more and more ground with each new round of shots, until they became what they called vaccine injured and wound up somewhere on the autistic spectrum. I felt helpless. In my desperation, I turned to Dr. Mishra, who felt the pulses of these children and developed an elegant treatment protocol, which I began using. That's when this epidemic hit home. I received the devastating news that my niece's three-year-old son, JT, had just been diagnosed with autism and was placed in a special school for autistic children. He couldn't speak, he only grunted sounds. He made no eye contact and spent his days pulling the blinds up and down for hours on end in his bedroom. He never asked to play with other children and would scream so badly in social situations that I remember one Thanksgiving at my house we had to put him in a separate room to play quietly with a toy train because he couldn't stand the noises of too many people around him. We put him on the protocol. About two months later, as I was working on a patient in my treatment room with the door closed, I heard my niece enter the waiting room with JT. They sat down waiting for their turn, and I heard JT say, Mom, what is your favorite color? Wiping back the tears, I flew open my treatment room door and said, What did he just say? And my niece was laughing, happy as could be. Next, I got a call from my niece that JT actually asked if he could play with the boy across the street. This was a major breakthrough for a little boy who just sat in a room all day in his own world. Then one day my niece called very excitedly to tell me that the principal from her autistic school asked if she and her husband could come in for an unplanned conference. They told her that while JT might have had autism when he first entered the school several months ago, he now appeared to be normal and said he should be mainstreamed into regular public school. Our family was jubilant. And then one day I got a letter from my sister-in-law, JT's grandmother, saying how thankful they all were for JT's progress. And then they actually put him on a soccer team just to see if he could try to play a team sport. And they were all laughing and crying on the sidelines as JT interacted once and for all like a normal little boy, having fun romping with the other children. Since then, we have successfully treated numerous children on the autistic spectrum. I present some of their pictures here with words from their parents describing their progress in seeing us.